everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations and Do With Simon today. And uh, this is a full moon report for Cancer, so the full moon in Cancer, and this is for the 2nd of uh, January 2018. So, uh, before I go ahead and share what I want to share with this video today, any of you that are looking for an upbeat kind of like pop culture astrology conversation, um, you're probably not going to get it from this conversation today because uh, the space that I'm in is a different one to to that kind of stuff. So if you're willing to uh, explore a little bit more on an emotional side and want to hear uh, a more relaxed uh, forecast, then this is something that you're going to get through this conversation. So I don't want to waste your time in thinking um, that this is upbeat. It's going to be a very deep and intense conversation. Or at least that's how I feel. So... With that being said, uh, I recorded this uh, video, I think, um, what is it, like a day a day before the, the full moon, and I want to open up and share a little bit about how this chart that you're looking at here at the moment, and how I feel is something that I like really uh, connect with. And so I want to talk about these things as a way of me processing myself, but also sharing with you how I see these symbols actually playing out. So the first thing that I want to uh, bring everybody's attention to is if you can have a look on the chart, you can see that there's this really strong connection um, with Venus, the Sun, Pluto, and Saturn. They're all in Capricorn there, okay? Now, Capricorn, as an archetype, there are... Uh, many there are many different ways in which you can understand capricorn but if you want to make it really really simple in terms of what this the essence of the symbol is about we're dealing with the nature of energy maturing into something in which we can then have definition and boundaries around i.e so that we can create security safety right so this is why when you look at your books like astrology books and stuff saturn can reflect the, the parent figure the, the father in that sense um you know the career and it's a it's simply because when we go out into the world there is a part of us that is taking our vulnerability and showing the world what it is so how do we uh, protect ourselves how do we create certain boundaries around us that allows us to feel safe in a world and of course this is a very important thing. Um, when I look at the world today, when I look at the state of the human psyche, when I look at the collective imprint, and of course there are many variables to this, so this is not one specific thing. Um, when I look and I see how the structures, how the... Um, the governmental structures, the way that we've empowered ourselves, the way that we have uh, allowed ourselves to be defined through in the past has, has really, really removed us from a part of us that can feel it's okay to be open and vulnerable. It's okay to uh, share what we have inside of ourselves without judgment, without criticism, without shame. And the Capricorn energy with the Saturn, this uh, Venus, the Sun on this Pluto here, what it's doing is it's, it's really bringing us an intense amount of um, need to look at the structures that we have created for ourselves and what type of reflection do we see within the context of that structure and then going as far as to say then how does how have we emotionally as a human race developed in accordance with what those structures have supported us with so i talk about things like um family okay when you when you think about your own family and you think about the um, early life imprinting, the early life environment that you grew up within. Think about how as a child, when you looked at the, the environment, you saw 
uh, safety. You saw parents or older people than yourself. Now imagine this, right? Take, take your imagination, take your third eye and move into the reality of a child looking at, a, at an adult. And what is that relationship like? Like for so many of us that are adults right now, when we look at a child, we, we look at it from our Capricorn perspective, right? Whereas when a child looks at the parent, there is, there is a different dynamic. And how aware are we of that process? So just, just imagine that when you're growing up in your life, what are the things that are absolutely important to you? I noticed that with my own children, the simplest thing, the smallest thing in the world can create an emotional reaction to them is the biggest thing in the world, right? And um, when you're growing up and you're looking at your life, or not you're looking at your life, but you're interacting with it, you see your parents as this, as your guardians, as the the nurturers, the, the, the people that are going to create safety for you, that are going to help you develop a strong sense of safety that your needs can be met. So how many of you watching this video right now there are going to be exceptions, this is not about this, that felt that that wasn't available to them, that what was necessary for you at that time when you were developing the foundation for what would be the security or the unconscious security patterns that you hold on to, that we hold on to, that I hold on to when we go out in life. So how is that original layering, that foundation created? how when you were interacting with the structures that were created for you, that provided for you, supportive enough for you to, when you get to the age of 30, you realize that you have a strong sense of self that can initiate direction in life, that can uh, interact with things in a healthy way. Your relationships are operating with um, minimal amount of projection. Uh, you are not um, affected by uh, the collective narcissistic uh, trauma that we all carry within ourselves and, and outside. Think about all those types of things, okay? Think about that when we are trying to heal ourselves within our, um, our story, when we're trying to heal ourselves within our lives, we're ultimately trying to find union with something that symbolizes the mother and father's love that we originally seeked when we came into this world. It's, it's, you know, the core of our whole entire journey is returning back to that point of unity, of uh, acceptance, of um, purity, of innocence. And yet when we go through our lives and we experience the Saturn energy, which is the Capricorn archetype, we develop duality. We develop that separation. And, you know, we can even go as far as to talk about how the endocrine system through the pituitary gland releases certain hormones that represses the pain that we experience as we grow up, right? And of course, there are positive things as well. There are positive reactions that the body uh, experiences as well, but we're dealing with the Capricorn energy here. So I'm talking back, I'm coming back to this Capricorn symbol, right? The context for everybody that's listening to me today, the Pluto, the Sun, the Venus, the Saturn, what are all those symbols doing in Capricorn? And how can we, how can we heal through them? How can we find that unity? How can we allow these energies to, to move through us and cleanse us and um, help us process our emotions uh, so that we're able to feel lighter and healthier within our bodies? So I, talk, so I talk about this thing where we're now connected to the family upbringing. We see these conditioning factors. We recognize the safety and security around us. And I invite you to ask yourself the question, how do you as your life's unfolding, recreate those patterns. And when you recreate those patterns, I invite you to contemplate the nature of the cause and effect. Capricorn is all about cause and effect. Um, and how, whenever you think about cause and effect, think about an energy band that is coming out of your stomach and connecting with whatever it is that you are interacting with and then think of it as a two-way energy band that is doing like a waveform so there is there is again you know 
have you have you ever taken a skipping rope for instance and or any form of like long string and shaken it on one side and it creates that wave effect throughout the, as it moves through the string well think of every single time you interact with things think of every single time you you make a decision think of this energy band moving out of your stomach and forming in a connection to whatever it is that you're interacting with and then how does that interaction through the wave coming back at you reflect the effect of your actions so i invite you here with these symbols to embrace and contemplate how early life conditioning the definitions the structures the emotional um sort of identities that we well let's just take out that's not let's not talk about that for a second but think about all all of that and think about then how that impacts how you make decisions in your life the structures you make in your life and what they feed back to you and what they are teaching you for me it was really really important to come across this uh, contemplation because as i said again i carry a lot of sadness in my 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 um, heart at the moment i carry a lot of and i'm sure we all do which is why that picture on the on on this um, screen today brought me an energy that i would like to share not only with the work that i do but also with my personality and and we all carry a lot of sadness capricorn correlates to the archetype of grief it correlates to the archetype of sadness it correlates to the archetype of delayed stress and a lot of emotions that have been through whether it was positive or whether it was uh, or should i say whether it was something that you actively did or that was something that was just overwhelming and you couldn't but emotional repression suppression you couldn't process you couldn't understand why it was happening capricorn is all that energy that stores it so when we have transits that move through these types of symbols it brings it to the surface and we have to process it we have to process it out of our skin capricorn is the archetype that reflects our skin and if you want to understand why that is the case capricorn reflects definition and if you look at the world today and we are very very our psyche is is distorted through seeing humanity through the definition of its skin and then identifying this the stigmas attached to it it's boundary right it keeps the the body safe so when you look at your skin when you nourish it with cream for instance or you nourish it with uh, certain oils you're applying the cancer archetype you're applying the pisces archetype and through osmosis scorpio it rejuvenates the skin so why do we not think of the same process with capricorn in our lives why do we not have these natural understandings that are available to us why is it that we seek so much for astrologers on the internet to give us advice about what we're supposed to do why do we seek external systems that helps us find more security in who we are why are they all there and why is there such a popularity when it comes to this type of stuff and for me the sadness is what answers the question that i have personally experienced within my own life and there are many 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 pluto and scorpios and many souls that are listening to this video that can relate to me because of your own experience whether it and we we as a human race have lost touch with the essence of what lies in our hearts and unfortunately the development of the masculine principle has led us so far away from our center that what we are dealing with right now is the repercussions the delayed stress of many many lifetimes of war many many lifetimes of aggression many lifetimes of uh, control and domination and emotional suppression and unprocessed grief and unprocessed anger and the list just goes on we don't have um, authentic spiritual teachers that show up with integrity and because of that we cultivate a deeper layer of mistrust and 
that just reinforces to us that when we are on the deep levels, deeply, deeply, deeply asking for a return to love, our return to acceptance, return to, to the womb, to return to um, our own inner sense, we are met with all these blocks and you know, it's, it's funny and I don't, I mean, I'm reve I'm, I'm honestly, honestly in this video today, sharing with you the essence of this chart, because even though I've spoken for such a long period of time, the key word here is vulnerability. The key word here is complete and utter courage. And I highly encourage every single one of you that has watched this video to read the article that, I, that uh, myself and Janet written. It's in the description, as well as the comments, where if you have a look here on the chart, can you see there? There's Jupiter and Mars. They're making that uh, balsamic phase connection with each other. And Mars and Jupiter will cross each other. I think it's on the 7th of January. Yep. And they're also squaring the nodes. And I wrote about that as courage and vulnerability. Scorpio being the part of us that invites us to look beneath the surface, right? To go into our subconscious, to go into our the layers of our deepest, deepest wounding. And because Jupiter and Mars is there, there's a really, really strong drive to, to access this, this part of us and to have faith in revealing and opening up vulnerability to, to honestly show true power. So, and then the Cancer archetype with the full moon in Cancer reveals this capacity to be vulnerable so that it's real and it's raw versus the masks that we can place on that are creating definitions around us and protection mechanisms around us because of whatever reason. The point here that brought me to this was that throughout this time that, I, that I'm sharing my original story, which is this Capricorn archetype, the family dynamic, the conditioning dynamic, the, the reason why we, we look outside of ourselves for external saviors, the reason why we can never fully understand why addiction exists but we try all the different ways to try and resolve it. And the thing that we're missing is that the root of addiction is the lack of love. It's the lack of unity. It's the lack of acceptance. It's the, it's the opposite of numbing pain. And my own life experience has shown me all those things. I've directly experienced all of those behavior patterns in my life to bring me to the realization that if we are to, to realize what healing is, we are to realize that it's, coming back to finding that wholeness with inside of ourselves. And there were, there's been at least three or four, and this is the point here with the vulnerability was there was at least three or four points at times where I've wanted to just swear with an expression of anger. Like that was, I wanted my anger to be expressed. And I stopped myself because I felt firstly that there are better ways to express um, uh, anger but at the same time, it was, it was just so present with me. And obviously you don't hear this in a conversation with an astrologer that you're watching on the internet that you follow going, okay, show me what's next. Where is the next car going to come from? Whereas this is about going into the water of our own existence that we don't want to go to because of this thing, which is again, the structures, the masculine principle. And there's no, there's no shame on this, this process, by the way, there's no, there's no like, oh, you know what? Hey, the flippant masculine principle has gone into that point and now has created this disease within our psyche in which we, um, are now like expressing, but not recognizing that we're not part of the solution. We're just part of, we're just, we're just manifesting it over and over and over again. And there's no shame in that. It's just where we've been and, and what we've got to do to recover ourselves in the sense of the, the honest work is to come back to acknowledging that this is where we are and this is what we need to heal from. So these, these wounds, so like I invite all of the, the men that watch this video to, to spend one week actively practicing, finding a way to label your emotion where you have anger and to label it, to put 
certain words around it. Like for instance, I'm angry, but behind that anger is I'm sad that uh, my relationship to my mom wasn't this way. Or uh, I'm angry, but I'm feeling disempowered right now because I don't like uh, or am aware of a trauma that I carry. So I invite all the men that are watching this video to embrace a week of conscious, emotional um, acknowledgement of our anger, which is the root of the pain. The pain, the, the, not the anger, the, the, the pain is, what, is what's creating the anger. The anger is just the manifestation of, of our disempowerment, our, our, like our inability to know how to process it out of us. And like I said, when I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm having this conversation with you, my throat and my chest is dense with sadness. And it's because I've allowed myself to feel like this is okay versus showing up on a, on a, on a like, you know, video with you guys and, and saying, oh, like, okay, cool, Capricorn, we're going to restructure these things. I'm like, no, I really think it's time for me to be authentic with myself. And that's to say, like, I don't like that we seek to empower ourselves and to show other people how to empower themselves uh, in ways that bring them away from their, their pain, bring them away from their sadness. And I feel like it's not, it's not necessarily uh, healthy to just dwell in it, but it's necessary for us to acknowledge it as a way of naturally transmuting what the body has been designed to do, which is to transmute, right? We want to create alchemy with our inspiration. We want to, and for most of us that are maybe watching this video, you've gone through this, you understand this. So again, you're interacting with it, hearing at me, but where I'm coming from is, is opening up this dialogue and saying, you know, m maybe for 2018, I would really like to create a, a, a conscious conversation with healing our grief, Saturn through Capricorn, healing our grief. There's a lot about restructure. There's a lot about economics, a lot about uh, oppression, totalism, but how about we just take all of that attention away from that and we bring it back to our hearts and we open up small pockets of repressed emotion from childhood or from parts of ourselves that we've never felt that we could honestly be real with ourselves or that we were overwhelmed or a parent died or um, we had an argument with a sister or whatever it is and we, we go there and we make a choice every single day to explore a little bit about that so that if we are to truly move forward with Neptune through Pisces, it's not to disassociate and to find beautiful ultra um, 12K visual stunning HD TVs for us to be bewildered at versus um, actually finding unity uh, within ourselves, finding holisticness within ourselves and creating and manifesting from a space that comes from a very deep sacred place within inside of ourselves a place that honors our journey as not being comfortable, not being like all sailboats and, and, and this is going to make you guys laugh, sailboats. And then the other part of the reality is bunnies and pink elephants and, and a rainbow that's just kind of sitting over there going, yeah, this is, this is what life's been like. It's not, I don't think so. I think a lot of people, if we had to acknowledge our sadness, we would be really, really like fully inundated with a lot of feelings of disempowerment. We just have to look at the certain ways that, that, yeah, I think it's, it's self-explanatory. I think that, <clears throat> well, when I feel the absent parent dynamic within us and lifetimes of creating a psyche and an ego development where we've looked at external authorities as um, the ones that should dictate where we should go. I think it's disempowering. Um, I most certainly didn't have those types of things available to me. And it, my journey of self-creation has had to embrace going, okay, I don't have that direction. I don't have those people that can guide me. I've been very fortunate in my life to have certain people show up was just with like a little signpost saying, go this way. And I kind of just follow that intuitively and it brought me to where I was, but there's never ever been that external guardian. So for me, my sadness comes in where it's like, yeah, I would have loved to have 
known what it's like to be parented or have had parenting dynamics where those needs could be met versus me feeling responsible for the other for the parents themselves or growing up too quickly in life because of the responsibility and because of the heaviness and then kind of looking back and going you know what happened to childhood those types of things and i want to i want to to acknowledge and embrace that we as a collective race the structures don't support us and it's time for us to metamorphosize jupiter and scorpio mars and scorpio mars trine jupiter trine uh the moon and cancer neptune of course as well and all the planets in scorpio uh, sorry capricorn to metamorphosize to ask ourselves the question is this what we really want as a society is this really what we want as our structures within our own lives is this the place that we want to cultivate love and on top of it all we're all children we're all children on this earth and we're running around and we're wanting to express what's natural to us and yet somewhere along the lines we lose our path because of the world being what it is and again it's it's not all like this it's not like i'm not painting a picture where it's completely destroyed there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of functioning human beings with integrated compassionate empathetic healthy structured experiences that cultivate and nourish people's psyches to embrace their their potential and we're fortunate in this western culture to have such a thing the point here is to acknowledge the other part of the story where that sadness exists so that we can process out our anger so that we can process out our trauma so we can process out our feelings of resentment our feelings of misunderstanding our feelings of of confusion and and violations of trust and abuse that we've on some level had to endure for me and for most of you that have probably got similar dynamics as myself moon opposed neptune or moon in pisces in the 12th house or you know any form of connection with neptune and the moon or saturn where are your boundaries who for me i i was never ever able to to know what those boundaries were so as an adult quote unquote adult really just a child that is still developing um healthy boundaries which is what an adult is um i sit here and i'm like oh okay cool so i've got to work on this i've got to work on how does that that boundary work for me and what do i like and what i'd not like and we got to develop that we've got to we've got to honor that healing process and i think that <clears throat> If we gave ourselves that opportunity to create a structure that was crystal clear, like that picture is there. Can you see that that picture with the, the butterflies? I purposely, like I said, I purposely chose it. Think of Capricorn as the container that supports our growth, right? But we need space to grow. We can't be throttled. And we live in a culture and a world that supports the throttling process in an unconscious way. So my question to you is, do you like that structure? How does your immediate life support or not support space for you to grow do you give yourself that the reason why the grass is clear with the the butterflies is because when we have a clear supportive structure it gives us the capacity to know that we could dream neptune pisces trining all of these things like <clears throat> an invitation to dream an invitation to imagine and then to allow ourselves emotional development that can give us wings to fly so that when we do want to fly we fly out of the container and into freedom but in a way where we're not got one wing working or the antenna is freaking going the other way and we can't navigate in the world and so what we do is just experience more victimization more shadow and more messed upness so there is a responsibility capricorn that we all have to not only ourselves but to the existence of this plane this plane because this plane is regenerative so please any of you and this is going to be very confrontational so i get it completely and it's okay if i lose 100 subscribers it's, i have to be authentic to myself this earth plane is regenerative the ecosystem is regenerative if we work on ourselves the outside will change 
So don't spend all of your attention focusing on changing the outside world because firstly, you do not have, I do not have the attention or the energy or the capacity to even remotely change the magnitude of energy that exists outside of ourselves. So what we can do is bring everything back to ourselves, bring all of our attention back to ourselves, work on ourselves, develop stronger connections, stronger boundaries, stronger connection to the heart and let that radiate out. That radiation from the heart is more effective than being guilty or feeling responsible for or having shame placed on you for your inability to think about the environment. And the reason the difference here is that one is a conditioning factor that keeps you in suppression and the other one is this natural harmony that goes, oh, this makes sense. I'd like to keep the environment clean from toxicity because inside of myself, I honor that my body is the earth and I like my temple clean. So why not keep the rest of the temple clean outside of myself, right? There's a natural intuitive authority that it comes from within versus outside. So we each have a responsibility to ourselves. We each have a responsibility to create relationships with other people where we want to say, hey, I wanna be nourishing to you by showing you that I'm nourishing to myself. And when I'm nourishing to myself, I naturally want to give that to you so that you can give that to me. So that when we create conscious relationships, what we're doing is we're allowing each other to experience not for the other in codependent ways, but honoring a natural and respectful interaction which is difficult because that's why I talked about it. I said, let's try for a week. Let's see if you can go through your anger, All right? How many times do you get angry with somebody that your boundaries have been violated through, right? You get angry. Yeah, okay, cool. And it's like, hey, I, and you want to fight. You want to get punished. You want to get resentful. Whereas it's like, let's try nonviolent communication. When, when I was interacting with you, um, I got triggered. I got triggered uh, because I felt um, abandoned or it brought up feelings of abandonment. My need was not met for closeness. Do you see when we create these types of conversations with other people, we are inviting the psyche that has been damaged to not be triggered, but to be embraced. And because all of us are looking for love. So I leave you with that conversation today. Um, I really hope that on some level, this has brought you someplace and, um, so like I said, I'm going to end with that today. Highly encourage you to go and read the article, guys. And um, thank you so much for listening to me share today. Uh, there's probably a lot more that I would like to share, but maybe I feel, well, I, I, I do. I feel uncomfortable just taking up lots of your time with something that might not necessarily be that inspirational to you. So thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate every one of your support. Um, write in the comments below if you feel what you feel with this conversation, if you would like more of this type of way of being. Um, other than that, have a wonderful uh, couple of days and I should uh, contact you with another video super soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.